So you both are technical. Well, he's probably more, but <laughs> yeah, but 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 you understood what was going on in like the Windows announcements of the Surface X computer, sure, right? Yeah. So so I didn't because <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not the most technical person in the office. Um, but when they were announcing it, I said my big complaint was it seemed like they were focusing so much on, um, you know, 2020 things that were coming out in 2020. And then you were like, no, don't you understand how big of a deal this ARM processor is? And I was like, no, can you explain it to me? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's an always on uh, PC. That's, well, what, that's what I wanted. Yeah, so let, let's take it a step back. All the other Surface computers before this are running a uh, Intel processor. Right. Some of them have uh, duo, duo cores and some of them have quad cores. Correct. This Surface, this Surface computer, the Surface X, is different because it has an ARM processor and not a um, Intel chip. Intel chip, right? So, what's the significance of that? Low power. So, a uh, Intel chip requires a lot of power, which generates a lot of heat, and so they run hot and they take a lot of power to run. Mm -hmm. So, your battery's going to drain. That's the biggest thing. Or I you think. need fans. Yeah, and if you want to have like a mobile like LT connection, it's like another like computer system that has to be added into the computer. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the ARM chip has mobile processing built into it, and it uses ARM uses low power. It's like a, it's the same technology that's in your cell phone, so it already has mobility built in and has it uses low power, so you get long battery life out of it. And what was what's the longest you've ever gone on battery at using it? Of course. Well, it's it's a complicated thing to answer because it, it depends on the application you're using. Mm -hmm. But I will have already noticed that the battery life lasts a lot longer than uh, a normal Surface that I had before. When they've kind of standardized that by saying video battery life. So, like if you if you're watching a video the entire time, this is how long the battery. Okay, can so we talked about this the other day. So, if you look at your applications, which are the worst uh, offenders of using battery, mm -hmm. and it's going to be your browser. Mm -hmm. So if you, most people use Chrome right. and Chrome just kills your battery. It eats up your battery. If you look at your CPU usage, um, the Chrome is going nuts. And that's why processor. Yeah. And it's because it's, you got multiple tabs right. open and they're on JavaScript and a lot of other things that we're doing video, all these things. And they're just chewing up your battery. So the Chrome native app that's in on the, um, Surface Pro X is compiled for X86. So it's running through emulation. So it's just going to behave sort of just like it was before. So you're not going to really get an advantage of using Chrome on a Surface Pro X. Mm -hmm. Now, if Chrome was compiled for the ARM processor directly, you would probably see a significant battery savings. Do you think it would perform any better? Too? I'd probably get the same speed or better. Okay. I, I bet probably 30% better because there are some stats that say that the ARM processor can run these applications faster if it's compiled natively for the ARM nice. chip. Is there any plan to, I mean, is, is, is the industry itself, the coders, the people that are making these software updates, are they, I mean, is that a push to get to or is it just kind of a... I think so. Um, you don't think it's a fad right now or some sort of gimmick to... It's a stepping stone to move on to the next There's thing. There's definitely going to be the the pitfalls and you know climbs the hills to figure out how to get how to get everybody on the same page. But Windows 10, you know, now having Windows 10 to compile for the ARM, uh, the emulation helps because if you don't have uh, if you're running applications that are directed specifically for x86 technology, the Windows 10 can still emulate it, which is a good thing. All right. So you can run your all your native applications you're used to already. What it doesn't do is to do x or the X64 compiled applications, which are like Photoshop and maybe some video processing applications and things like that. But I, but I personally have run into some little utility applications and things that are only have 64 bit versions. And so I can't find the 32 bit version. And so I can't get it to run. So I've had some, some little technical problems there. So you can't get it to run at all. Like, yeah. That, even, that means even there's even Microsoft applications that are just designed for X64 that they don't have a 32 bit version. And so I can't run it. So what about, that, I mean, Office, Teams, all the other things that we use normally, though? So Office is compiled for um, x86, Intel. Okay. So even though they have an ARM, they haven't compiled um, Office for the ARM chip yet, which is, I would expect that to come soon. Because if they did that, if that's like the second next applications or Apple suite of applications that you use, that's going to considerably save battery life. Now, compared to like what you're using right now, because you're on the book too. Yep. And he's on the X. I mean, this thing's like an i7. You know, with quad 16 core. gigs, quad core, you know, built on RAM on the GPU. Uh, I mean, comes with a GPU. I mean, all, all that kind of stuff compared to the two of those. 
I mean, those are for two different types of roles. Right. Yeah. So right. this is the always on, always connected computer. So mobile. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think about getting on Wi-Fi with this device. So I go, I go travel or go somewhere else, different offices. You're on LTE. I'm, I'm connected. Right. And that's the beautiful thing about it is I don't think about connectivity. Wi-Fi there or not, I don't care. It's like I sort of have access already. With the other devices, I have to go search out Wi-Fi, right, or worry sure. about being connected. And the world is online, so you know, check your email and other things you need to be. So I would say, I almost say that you fall in three categories when you buy a Surface. Let's say there's the desktop user, right, which almost would put almost out of the category because I think the desktops are sort of obsolete. Yeah. So a Surface um, Studio, even though it's a beautiful looking device, and uh, it's not, it's not fabulous, realistic for a lot. Yeah, it's not a desktop computer because most people are buying desktop computers to save money um, because they want an inexpensive computer and form factor and desktops make sense, right? Sure. So let's eliminate that as a category. So the, la the next two categories is probably someone who is mobile, like an executive or salespeople um, using office applications. It's like everything that you would do on a computer, the browsing, email, probably 95% of people, may maybe 90 But at an average speed. Yeah, at a normal It's, it's nothing speed. crazy. Yeah. It's like, well, the computer technology over the last every year, it's like getting so much faster and faster. Yeah. So the, what you're used to and then what, it, what you have today, it's just going to be faster already. Well, I'll tell you this. This is a quad core. Mm -hmm. And the last one that I had um, a few, well, probably like six months ago was the dual core, uh, like everybody else. So, so you have the dual core on there and, you know, we'd hook it up to the dock and, you know, we have ConnectWise, we have IT Glue, we have Chrome, we have RDP sessions, we have Outlook, we have... I mean, we use all these things, so we don't close them. We They're all open. They're sure. always open. We have a ton of stuff that we use. And, you know, CPU is at like 80, 90% all day long. And now, granted, we're not mobile to the point like, you know, like you or sales will be. We're, we're, we're in one spot, whether it's here or at home, but we're in that spot for a while because we're helping people all day long. And then um, I would notice I'd do a Teams call and everything would get really mm -hmm. choppy. I'd have to start closing things down. As soon as I go to the quad core, I don't have to do any of that anymore. So just the, just in time has fixed a lot of the problems. Right. right. And you know, the next iteration of this, the next I seven, the I nine, yeah. whatever, I mean, who knows it can make it to where I never even noticed a blip. So that's my comparison. You've got the pro series, which is like everyone's computer, right? Yeah. Um, and it can, in, in, in your case, you're also multitasking with a lot of different applications that are pretty sophisticated. So right. you're not the normal user. Right. But for most people, the pro is going to solve every problem. they Absolutely. have. Absolutely. Okay. So, but the next step is, um, I would say a book because like if you're doing video editing or like computational type things, AutoCAD, um, anything that requires a lot of like horsepower, graphics, GPU kind of stuff like that book. That built too. on GPU yeah, it just makes takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. Um, and that, that computer, you know, requires a lot more power and it's going to probably battery life is not going to be as right. great. And it's heavier. It's, it's bigger. Heavy, yeah. It, yeah. it, it. It's more expensive. That's if for sure. you didn't know how much the pro weighed, then it wouldn't be a big deal. How much this thing weighs and how big it is. I, I, even, However, even the X kind of blew my mind a little bit. Like, man, this thing is almost edge to edge screen, you know, because we get yeah. we get really um, spoiled with our, our mobile phones. Right. Because when the, the mobile phone technology, all of a sudden it's like, you know, you used to have this giant border around a screen, you know, and you only get the middle. And then all of a sudden, you know, you know, when Apple had that, I mean, there's always been screen to screen stuff like way before Apple did it. But, you know, in, in my case, always having an iPhone when they did the edge to edge for the 10 and got rid of the buttons and got rid of everything, it was just like, this is what I've been waiting for, you know, because, you know, it's just annoying having all sorts of edge. And then the X now is almost I mean, it's it's pretty much almost wrap around. It's a feather light computer. Yeah. I just close it up and carry it off and. I open it up. I'm connected to wherever I am. The battery's still there. Like I, I'm not thinking about the battery like I used to. Like I'm always thinking, oh, I got to get to a power somewhere. This I'm like, oh, I didn't bring my charger with me. So every time you wake it up, you're kind of like, oh, yeah. Oh, the battery's still kind of. Another nice thing they've done too is it has an all like a instant on. So as soon as I walk up to it, I can um, hit the button. And it's like back where I was on the surfaces, the older surfaces. I have to wait like a, for a minute for it to rev all up and oh, get yeah. all the applications going again. And then it's trying to, you know, read your face or put in, you know, there's, yeah. there's but definitely a hibernation period. It's definitely a lot snappier getting it up and running and using it. So it's like, like you open it up and I can use the stuff and I'm, and I'm, and I'm close it up and I'm done. Battery seems to always be there. I mean, it's almost like a mobile device. Yeah. The X64 is the, probably the it's biggest problem right now. It's just those, those every once in a while there's some little, and I'm a techn more technical user than average probably because I'm messing with other things, but I'm trying to make it a book to computer, you know? Right. So, um, 
but I would like to see this be able to do that because I think there's every once in a while there might be something you might need to, to load up, and I think that's coming.